And we're back with more exciting three-phase calculations. In this case, we are going to look at delta loads. All right, so we're going to do three-phase with delta loads. So last time we noted right, there's sort of three sections you could consider what's happening at the generator, what's happening on the line, what's happening at the load. All right. We noted that there was either an increase or a decrease in certain voltages or currents depending on the configuration by this constant square root of 3. And just as a side uh, commentary here, it's not the square root of 3 because it's three phase. In other words, if you went to a five phase system, it wouldn't be the square root of 5. All right, that's just coincidental. Um, but in a three phase system, that will always be the case. You will always have that square root of 3 uh, sort of floating around there, depending on what the configuration is. All right? In some configurations, you won't even really have to bother with that, like the YY configuration. We noticed the currents, they were all the same. It was just the voltage between the, uh, the, the, the generator phase or the load phase and the line voltage. There was that square root of 3. All right, so we're going to see a similar kind of situation, maybe kind of a mirror image of it today, because we're going to look at delta loads. So we're going to start with a delta-delta system. All right, so we've got our three points out here. Here's our generator. Points A, B, and C. And our load, similar. I'm going to use the same load that we used in the preceding problem. We are going to get different results this time because of the configuration. But we're going to say that the load, once again, always balanced, is going to be 10 at 45. All right, so we're going to connect A to A prime, B to B prime. Oops, something like that. Now, I'm going to set this up for the same line voltage that we had in the preceding example. In other words, I'm going to set up a generator phase voltage of 208. So where do we go from there? You know, what's consistent in this configuration. Well, when we have a delta configuration, then the phase voltage is the same as the line voltage. And so I know what the line voltage is. Now in this case, because it's delta to delta, it would be apparent that the generator phase is the line, is the load. All right, so this also equals the generator, excuse me, not the generator, the load phase voltage. All right, so they're all 208. Everybody's 208. Yay! All right, now, what about the currents? All right, what do we see, for example, for the load phase current? Well, you're generating 208, you're applying 208, and that 208 is sitting across the load, which is 10 at 45. So we just take the 208, divide by your 10 at 45. And again, I'm not going to be too persnickety about the angles here, recognizing that there's, you know, three going out at 120 and 240 from the base. But anyway, when we divide that out, right, we're going to wind up with 20.8 uh, amps, all right? Okay, negative 45 degrees for that particular one. But that's what we see for the, uh, for the current sitting in the load, right? So you could imagine... I'll just arbitrarily draw a direction and say, okay, here's my, uh, my load phase current, all right? That's 20.8 amps. Well, what do you think is going to happen over on um, the generator? And what's happening in the load, right? Like, what is this current? And then what's that current? Well, look, there's 208. There's 208. And if we always remember that the generator apparent power has to equal the load apparent power, because right? otherwise, you know, you're, you're violating 
conservation here. That's got to be true. So if they have the same voltage, what do you think? They would have to have the same current. Okay, so this is also going to equal I of generator phase. But what about the line current? Right? I mean, the line current is clearly, in this case, not the same as either the generator or the load. Right? In the preceding examples that we looked at, you know, we had a Y-connected element in here. So you could kind of figure out, oh, this is you know, a single thing. The, the, um, the line current is going into this little you know, Y-shaped uh, load. All right? So that was kind of an obvious sort of situation. But here you got the split out. So what ends, up, what ends up happening? Well, the same kind of thing that happens in the Y connections with the voltage is what happens with the current. In other words, we find that square root of 3 coming in. So I line winds up equaling the phase current. In this case, they're the same thing, but I'll just go back from the generator. Times square root of 3. Right. That will work out, in this case, to about 36 amps. Right. So we take uh, 20.8 times square root of 3, we get about 36 amps. Okay. And finally, we can figure out um, what the generator and load apparent power is. What do we have for a voltage? Well, we got 208, right? What do we have for current? 20.8. Multiply those out, and we get approximately 4320 volt amps. Again, that's per leg. Now, if you're thinking, hey, wait a minute, we had an identical load last time. We didn't get anywhere near this. We got like 1440. Why 4320? Because in this case, we got 208 volts across 10 ohms rather than 120 volts across 10 ohms. So there's clearly a difference here, right? And we're pulling a lot more current. All right. Final configuration would be a Y to delta configuration. So let's put our three points in here again. And this is going to be the generator coming in like so. And I'm going to set this up so once again we get the same kind of result. Point A, B, and C. And then here is this identical load. And at least as well as I can draw it. This is not art class, folks. All right, so let's connect them up, A to A, connect the Bs together, connect the Cs together. Hey, do you remember what happens if you swap these? If you connect A to A, B to C, and C to B, anybody remember? You get a motor that turns backwards, right? That's not always a good thing. Think of a drill going backwards, right? If you're trying to drill into something and it's going the wrong way, oops, not so good. Okay, so I want to get the same kind of result in this circuit as I have in this connection over here. In other words, I want to end up with the same load conditions, right? I have the same ZL, 10 at 45. What did I have for a, um, a load uh, phase voltage? Well, I had the 208. I still want that. How do I get 208 out of here? All right, so let me just put down what I want to get. Okay, I want a load phase voltage of 208 volts. Now, because this load is set up in a delta configuration, all right, the delta configuration has this characteristic that you know, that uh, phase is the same as the line. So this would be true that that's also equal to your line voltage. Okay. Now I come back here, and I say, what, what's, what's the deal back here? Well, when we go from the Y configuration, you might remember from the preceding video 
there's that square root of 3 that's going on. Okay, so if I want to find out what the generator phase voltage is, right, not the, not the line, but the phase, that would be my line voltage divided by the square root of 3. And 208 divided by the square root of 3 will get you 120 volts. Now, if you think back, again, on what we did in the preceding one, that's what we wound up with, right? We had 120 volts for here. We did the little, um, you might remember, these three phasers, right? 120, 120, 120, and we said, okay, the distance from there to there was square root of three times. So that is going to be um, 208. Now we're just going the other way. In other words, I know this is 208, so these pieces would have to be divided by the square root of 3. That would get me 120 volts. Okay, so far so good. All right, so I know what the voltages are now. Uh, time to figure out some currents. Okay, so what do I wind up with for my load phase current? Well, back to my load. We knew that was 120, excuse me, 208 volts. So I got 208 volts. What's my impedance? It's 10 at 45. The magnitude of that current, once again, is going to work out to 20.8 amps. And I will say the same thing I said last time, which is, I don't care how you got the 208, right? Just do it like that. Here you get 208 because you have a, a delta-connected generator where the phase is 208. Here you get 208 on the line because you have a Y-connected generator with 120 on the phase. But either way, you get 208. Load doesn't care. All the load knows, quote-unquote, is that it sees 208. So yeah, that makes perfect sense. My load phase current in either case is going to be 20.8 amps. All right? All right. Now, given that, I can sort of reuse my calculation here for the line current. In other words, it's going to be my generator phase. Yeah, uh, excuse me. My, it is going to be the generator phase, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The load phase... times the square root of 3, which is the 36 amps, right? Same situation we had over here. So you just think, hey, I got 36 amps. Well, now it's pretty easy what I just said a moment ago. The generator phase has to equal, in this case, whatever the line is, right? Because it's just a direct connection. This is this. There's no splitting. There's no combining. So that has to equal 36 amps. All right? Last thing. What do we have for um, the load and the, and the uh, generator? Well, the load's identical. I mean, this, this doesn't change. We still have 208 times the 20.8, right? There's the 20.8, there's the 208. So that's still going to be 4320. Now, what about on the generator side? Does this work out correctly? Well, on the generator side, we got 120 volts, right, for the generator phase voltage. And then we multiply that by the generator phase current, which happens to equal the line current. And when you multiply those out, guess what? You'll get 4320 volt amps per leg again. All right. Okay, that pretty much covers everything. Right now, if you go through on your calculator, you're not going to get exactly these values. Uh, you're going to get, you know, a little bit off because, for example, if um, to several digits, if you did 120 volts times the square root of 3, you wouldn't get exactly 208. You'll get like 207.846, blah, 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 blah. So if you go through with your calculator, you know, you, those final digits are going to be a little, a little bit off. But the standard is, you know, we just round off um, that, like, the 120 that goes up to 208. So the, in the system, you would just see that it's called 208. Nobody would ever call it 207.846. Um, that would be crazy, right? All right, so that pretty much covers everything on these three-phase systems. The four kinds of connections that we have, right? So we have a YY connection. We have a delta-Y a, um, a delta connection, delta-delta, and Y-delta. 
and there you go.